Hello and welcome to the channel. Got some exciting news here for you. Today we're going to talk about .NET 8 extensibility for Azure Logic App Standard. And this is something that was recently released in public preview. Let's go. All right, so why is this episode important? So last year we did introduce the general availability of .NET Framework support for Azure Logic App Standard. And this allowed developers to go ahead and build an Azure function beside their Logic Apps workflow project and perform some local debugging and testing. Now, we've had a lot of positive feedback about that particular experience, but the number one question was, well, I don't use .NET Framework, I'm not a BizTalk customer, when can I see a newer version of .NET supported? And that's exactly what we've done here. So it's the same experience. I'll walk you through it in the demo. Very similar sort of mechanics in terms of how this actually works. And the difference is that you will now be able to choose .NET 8 and we will allow you to go ahead and author .NET 8 code and naturally go ahead and run it. So this is in public preview, but because we've got like this existing model in place, it is something that uh, I feel we should be able to take to GA in the not so distant future. So let's go ahead and let's jump into a demo. All right, I'm in Visual Studio Code and uh, I am using the public bits. So you should automatically have this downloaded for you when you do open up VS Code, but uh, just in case you're not as familiar with this. You will need the Azure Logic App extension here. I'm using 4.25.1. You can see that that was released, let's see, on the 19th. Today is the 21st. The other thing to, to look for is the backend bundle. And the backend bundle you'll find in C users, username, Azure Functions, Core Tools, Functions, Extension Bundles, Microsoft.Azure.Functions.Extension Bundles dot workflows and here you're going to see that we've got this 1.70.60 and that was released on june 19th so if you're watching this video down the road you know as long as you're on at least these versions you should be good from that perspective so let's go ahead and get rid of this and close out on this okay in vs code i've got nothing open at this point and so the next step I'll want to go ahead and perform is click on the Azure A, then click on the Logic App icon, and then click on Create New Logic App Workspace. So this is going to be the same entry point that you've seen previously with .NET Framework. Next up, I need to select a folder. Okay, so I've got a folder selected. Now I need to provide a name of the workspace. So this is just Kind of like think of it like your solution name if you're familiar with Visual Studio, but uh, I'm just going to call this Net 8 Video. And then, you know, this so this is kind of interesting here too. This is another thing that we've added, but won't talk about it too much here today. We do support the ability to go ahead and run rules engine projects. And, and basically, what this is, is this is coming from the, the BizTalk stack and maybe you've got some rules that you've previously used with BizTalk, you want to move those forward to Logic Apps, that is something that we do support. Now in this case we do want to use the Logic App with Custom Code project. Interestingly enough the rules engine actually also will use a form of custom code in order to uh, achieve that result. Now this is the big change, right? So historically we only offer .NET Framework, so by default you got .NET Framework. Now that we offer .NET 8 as well, we can go ahead and select .NET 8. Here we need to provide a name of the function. I'm just going to call this get weather. We continue to have just a, a simple little function that's uh, included some boilerplate templated code just to get you up and running quite quickly. Here we need to provide a namespace. I'm just going to use contoso.enterprise. Spelled it wrong. So we'll go ahead and provide that. And then we'll give this just a few seconds and we will see some new folders being created for us. Before that happens, we do also provide a stateful workflow. So we can go ahead and, in, or sorry, a workflow stateful or stateless. I'm going to go with stateful and I will call this my workflow and we'll open in the current window. And so now we should see our projects being 
loaded into our IDE here. So we've got the workspace, we called it Net8 Video. Then we've got the functions project. So under the hood, this is an Azure function. What is a little bit different with this is that we do have our own workflow action trigger that becomes our entry point. And here you can see we've got just some boilerplate code. You know, we can support a variety of different inputs and outputs. Here we've got an integer, we've got a string. We're gonna return a complex object, which is, you know, a POCO that's just defined below here. So uh, we can also accept, you know, complex objects inbound as well, but just showing some variety here. Now what's interesting in this CSProj file here is that we are going to include a series of build tasks. These build tasks are going to take place of building your custom code and then bin placing it into your Logic Apps project. So that is, is fairly foundational for us. We want to separate the two project types, keep the Logic Apps project uh, quite clean, and you will always deploy your assemblies and your biz talk, sorry, your logic app project will leverage your assemblies. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We can go ahead and start a new terminal and then select functions as like our kind of in scope project. And then let's go ahead and perform a .NET build. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna see some new folders being created inside of this lib, uh, this lib folder here. And uh, that's where we're going to go ahead and bin place all of our, you know, newly created custom code and also this metadata file called function.json that will also be used to, you know, go ahead and load up specific functions when we're in the workflow designer. So here, let's expand on this lib folder. Now I'm in the logic app project. I've got lib, I've got custom, and then I've got .NET 8. And you know, inside of .NET 8, we've got the getWeather.dll, and we also have the function.json here as well. This is what's going to, you know, allow the designer to understand what are the inputs and outputs that are possible. So let's just close out of this. Let's now open up our workflow. Let's open up the designer now because we've gone ahead and done that build before this is going to be automatically populated for us and, and how that works is you know the runtime here is going to go or it's the design time the designer is going to go ahead and open up this function.json look for any functions that exist there and then basically go ahead and enumerate those in this drop down uh this is you know if you've seen the data framework stuff this is going to be you know the same we've got the ability to go ahead and use different dynamic content different inputs and uh, you know we also can use expressions if we want and then certainly when it comes down to our response we can naturally use the output from our function this is why it's particularly important to use uh, well in this case that um, complex type as the output because now i can go ahead and return multiple properties or attributes back to the workflow itself so that's pretty cool now we do support debugging so let's go ahead let's set just a couple breakpoints here this is going to be in our custom code let's go into our workflow and we can set a breakpoint here and how we go ahead and run the debugger is we go ahead the first thing we do is we go ahead and we select our logic app and we hit the start debugging uh, this will take you know a few seconds to go ahead and uh, fire up. Uh, you can see that the Azurite is starting automatically. Uh, you don't have to do that manually anymore, which is quite nice and convenient. Okay, so you can see when we see this, this is a good sign, right? So we've got the endpoint. We've got the endpoint for our HTTP request. We see our workflow action trigger. That means like our .NET code has been loaded up. And then we've got this dispatcher here as well. Now, at least at this point, uh, we need to do something a little bit different for the code debugging. Uh, within .NET Framework solution, you could just go ahead and select this and attach. But for now, what we are left with, we need to go to this command palette and then go ahead and select this debug attached to a .NET 5 plus or .NET Core process. So just go ahead and click that and then you can select this top this top item. And so by doing that, now we can see this number's 
um, increase to two, and so we're in good shape. Now you could go ahead and, and pass in a request from Postman if you wanted, or if you wanted to write code to go do that, you could as well. But the simplest way to get started is to use this overview. So right mouse click on your workflow, select overview, and now you can see that we've got this run trigger button enabled. We also have the endpoint populated too. So if those two things show up, then you're in good shape. So now we're gonna go ahead and run this. And we're in the workflow now, and we can step through this. You've got those commands. Let's see, where are they? View. So yeah, under the run menu, right? You can step over, step into, start debugging, etc. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit. All right, so F10 also controls my Camtasia video editing software, so we won't go ahead and use that anymore. We can also use these, uh, these, these buttons up here. So we can go ahead now and just hit, um, you know, step over if we want. We can take a look at all of the local variables that are being set as well. But here, we're just gonna go ahead and hit F5. Now, if we head back over to the overview, we should see that we've got a run that's just completed. All right, so we've got our run history here. We can go ahead and click into a specific instance. And then sure enough, we can see all of the inputs and outputs, all of the data that was passed into our function all of the data that was passed out of it. So yeah, that's the demo for today. More to come on this particular subject, but yeah, pretty excited to see .NET 8 now supported, the latest version of .NET that's available, and go ahead and check it out.